Chapter 13 Julius Caesar Crossing the Rubicon Mrs. Teachwell's Report After he conquered Gaul, Caesar started marching back to Rome. By this time, the Roman senators were very nervous about Caesar. They thought he might march into Rome and take over. The senators sent Caesar a message. They told him to stop and send his soldiers home. They ordered him not to cross the Rubicon River. If he did, they said he would not be treated as a hero. Instead, he would be treated as a traitor and an invader. In the year 49 CE, Caesar crossed the Rubicon. He is said to have remarked in Latin, The die is cast. That was his way of saying he knew he was taking a big risk. Crossing the Rubicon meant there was no turning back. Caesar's actions led to a civil war, a war in which Romans fought against Romans. Caesar was the leader on one side. Pompey, another famous Roman general, was the leader on the other side. Caesar defeated Pompey and chased him to Egypt, where Pompey was killed. When Caesar got to Egypt, he found another country tangled up in a civil war. The princess Cleopatra was trying to take power from her brother. Caesar sided with Cleopatra. He helped her become queen of Egypt. Caesar had big plans. He didn't think Rome was run the way it should be. He wanted to change a lot of things. He had the Senate pass new laws. He replaced the old calendar with the one we still use today. Did you know that the month of July is named for Julius Caesar? Caesar wanted to do more, but he felt he needed more power. He got himself appointed dictator. At first, he was appointed dictator for only one year. That was not so unusual. The Romans had chosen dictators in the past. A dictator could be put in power during times of trouble. But the dictator was only supposed to rule for a little while, until the troubles passed. That was not what Caesar had in mind. He had himself appointed dictator for ten years. That upset a lot of people. How do you think those people felt a little later when Caesar had himself appointed dictator for life? That was really too much for some people. For hundreds of years, Rome had been a republic. Now, Caesar was setting himself up as a dictator. Perhaps he even wanted to be a king. That was even more upsetting. The Romans had driven out the kings hundreds of years earlier. A group of Romans agreed that Caesar was a threat to the Republic. They stabbed him to death in the Senate. Some of the men who stabbed Julius Caesar were men he considered friends. One of them, Brutus, was a man Caesar had treated almost like a son. How could these men kill Caesar? Brutus explained that it was not that he loved Caesar less, but that he loved Rome and the Roman Republic more. Brutus and the other conspirators killed Caesar to save Rome. At least, that was the plan.